everyone, welcome back to Chemify, and today we're going to be taking a rapid fire look at the weird and wonderful state of matter that is supercritical fluids, including some of their funky applications. Let's dive straight in. Ordinarily, we're accustomed to thinking of solids, liquids, and gases as the three primary states of matter for a given substance. The state a material assumes depends on factors like temperature and pressure, and this is typically illustrated on a phase diagram. For instance, at sea level, pure water will freeze at 0 degrees C and boil at 100 degrees C. As a substance transitions from a solid to a gas, its molecular arrangement undergoes a significant transformation from the highly structured and closely packed lattice of a solid to the less structured and more densely packed liquid, and finally to the unstructured and widely spaced gas state. At lower temperatures and pressures, attractive forces between molecules dominate, similar to what we see in liquids or solids. As temperature rises, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, and their movements become increasingly energetic until they break free from the attractive forces, transforming into a gas. Interestingly, beyond a certain critical temperature, a substance can't be liquefied no matter how much pressure is applied. Conversely, increasing pressure compresses the molecules together, usually inducing condensation into a liquid. However, beyond a critical pressure, a substance can no longer exist as both a liquid and a vapour. Beyond these critical conditions, molecules become densely packed, like in a liquid, but the high kinetic energy from temperature essentially nullifies the attractive forces as in a gas. The result is a supercritical fluid, a unique fourth state of matter where the properties of both a liquid and a gas become indistinguishable. In a supercritical fluid, you'll find behaviours like a gas quote -unquote, flowing like a liquid, and a liquid diffusing like a gas. In fact, as one approaches the supercritical state, molecular interactions can go a bit haywire, causing large density fluctuations. This can cause light scattering, which makes the solution glow, and we call this effect critical opalescence. All these properties give supercritical fluids some unique applications, especially in chemical engineering. Let's have a look at some. Supercritical fluids are frequently used in separations and extractions. Supercritical CO2 is often used as an environmentally friendly solvent, as opposed to harmful organic solvents. It can dissolve both polar and non-polar substances, and their solvating power can be tuned through adjustments to pressure and temperature. This has enabled their use in caffeine extraction from coffee beans, essential oil extraction from plants, or separating out complex pharmaceutical mixtures. Supercritical CO2 also has its uses as the working fluid in power cycles for power generation. The supercritical state generally allows operation at a single phase of higher temperature or pressure, allowing for enhanced energy conversion efficiency and no liquid gas phase change losses. Still in the energy, or rather the nuclear industry, the futuristic Generation 4 supercritical water reactor uses supercritical H2O as a coolant possessing more efficient heat transfer, better inherent safety, and more versatile possibilities for reactor types. Supercritical fluids have also found pivotal use in nanoparticle synthesis. Now, nanoparticles are fascinating materials, possessing dimensions less than 100 nanometers, with their properties being highly dependent on their size. Typical production methods involve a compound containing the metal you want to turn into a nanoparticle, and reacting it with a reducing agent. Supercritical fluids and their unique temperature or pressure-dependent properties as a solvent enable more precise control over nanoparticle formation by influencing processes like nanoparticle nucleation. For instance, supercritical CO2 serves as a green solvent to dissolve metal precursors, facilitating fine-tuning of nanoparticle size and morphology applicable in catalysis and drug delivery. Supercritical water rapidly hydrolyzes metal salts, yielding well-defined metal oxide nanoparticles. With advantages like high purity and minimal waste, supercritical fluids are transforming nanoparticle production. 
Alternatively, supercritical methanol plays a crucial role as a solvent and reactant in certain biodiesel production processes. Ordinarily, we would need triglycerides or oils, liquid methanol and a catalyst, and through transesterification reactions we get biodiesel. However, with supercritical methanol, it can act as a solvent, dissolving the triglycerides, and act as a catalyst, enabling faster reaction rates, higher biodiesel yields, and even reduced waste generation. It's also easier to separate the products from the reaction mixture. The supercritical methanol can preferentially dissolve the biodiesel, and then it can be depressurized or cooled, where the biodiesel drops out as a liquid, and the supercritical methanol becomes gaseous methanol. So there we have it. I hope this video sparked your curiosity into supercritical fluids, as well as some of the fascinating technological applications of them. As usual, please do consider subscribing, sharing, and signing up to Chemify's mailing list at chemify.com.